What's crack a and it's your boy Brushmo, just in case you did not know. So we're back again, once again, and today we're talking about free agency. It is upon us in the next few weeks. So I'm here to give you my predictions on where I think some of these offensive players will go. So stay tuned tomorrow for defensive players. We're going to go on go through the offense today because there's a lot of names, a lot of notable names out there available on free agency. But if you haven't already, go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content and go ahead, leave a comment in the comment section below and enjoy, indulge in that nice, sensual football discourse. I look forward to your comments. Oh boy. Oh boy. And the best way to support the channel is to become a member. So Go ahead and do that. A lot of perks come with that, especially if you're a Bro Scout tier. You get access to the Discord as well as my full rankings for the 2021 NFL Draft and my prospect board or my big board, I guess. Better way to say that. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into the nitty gritty. We're going to start with the quarterback position, obviously. And I think Dak's going to go ahead. He's going to get hit with the franchise tag or some deal is going to be done there. I don't think he's going to make it to free agency. That's just my opinion on it. So I got here Ryan Fitzpatrick and Cam Newton both going for one-year deals. I think uh, New England, they need to figure out something at quarterback, right? They need to figure out something. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, there's a good chance he could re-sign with the Dolphins, but I think it's more likely that the Patriots make a play at him or a guy like Andy Dalton. So I got him going to the Patriots. And again, a lot of this is based on some of the rumors I've heard. Again, this isn't necessarily what I would do if I were these teams. So keep that in mind. But Cam Newton to Washington just kind of makes sense. You know, you're going to be able to get him, especially after the year he had in New England on a pretty good discount. So you could add him to that quarterback room there. He's got the connections with Ron Rivera. So you got Cam, Alex Smith, Tyler Heineke. So you got a good quarterback or at least. A decent quarter, a decent enough quarterback room until you can kind of figure a long-term solution there. So I think they'll bring him in. Also, Andy Dalton, I have going to the Broncos. Um, they got to do they got to do something outside of Drew Locke. So I'm assuming they do a move similar to what they did with Joe Flacco bringing him in. So I think they're going to bring in uh, Dalton. As for some of the other quarterback free agents, I don't think Mitch. I think somehow Mitch Trubisky makes it back to the Bears on an extension. Um, I don't know if it's de there's a deadline with the fifth-year tender, so I think they extend him in some way because I don't know what the Bears possibly can do at quarterback outside of a trade. And then Jameis Winston, I think, is very likely to resign on another one-year deal, perhaps, and they'll have a quarterback battle. because I, I can't imagine a world where Drew Brees comes back, but I guess that's yet to be seen. On to the running backs. This one's... Incredibly tough, but these are some of the guys that I have right now. Aaron Jones, I got going to the Dolphins. I don't like it. Like I said, this is based on rumors I've heard, but the Dolphins, they have one of the biggest cap spaces going into free agency, so they'll be able to afford to give out a lucrative deal at running back. And we haven't really seen running backs get very many lucrative deals. With Todd Gurley, Melvin Gordon, they kind of had to settle for what was given out there. And I think what... Gordon only went for like two years, 12 million, I think, to the Broncos. I'm not positive uh, about that. But I got Aaron, I got the Dolphins going ahead and grabbing Aaron Donald. Uh, James Conner, I have going to Arizona because I don't think um, Drake will be back. But I have him going there on uh, three years, 20 million. Uh, I got I got these uh, figures for contracts by over or from over the cap. So keep that in mind as well. Um, pulling from sources much wiser than i but so i have him going there uh drake i think is gonna fetch a similar deal but uh, i i've heard a lot of stuff about connor to arizona and then Le'Veon bell i think is gonna go to tampa man he's rain chasing at this point so i think they could get him at a real real good discount as for uh some of the others this is real tough to call and there's a lot of mixed uh just a lot of different perspectives i guess on where some of these guys like might go like chris carson um kenny and drake uh, leonard fournette so it's tough to call especially in a running back market that's on the decline in terms of what teams want to invest in so that's yet to be seen mike davis i think is going to end up re-signing with the panthers especially if they end up making a bid to go out and try to get deshaun watson and that might involve cmc so i think bringing back mike davis who had a lot of success for them last season is very important 
On to the real fun part, the wide receivers, man. Because this is a very good wide receiver free agency. And I think uh, Kenny Galladay is likely to get hit with the franchise tag. But... Uh, I think, and I think Allen Robinson will get hit with it too, but I think he's going to be involved in a tag and trade. And then he'll end up getting an extension from the team it goes to, which I have being Jacksonville. I think Miami and Jacksonville are kind of in the mix here for Allen Robinson. Uh, four years, 84 million was the projected over there. But yeah, I think a return to Jacksonville with a competent quarterback, not Blake Bortles. We all can assume it's Trevor Lawrence. So. I can see that happening. And then Chris Godwin, I mean, Washington, they were in the receiver market. They made a very, very strong um, push for Amari Cooper. I think it was like five years, $100 million. So I think they'll do the same with whether it's Galladay that hits free agency, Robinson, or Godwin. I think they'll make it a similar push. And I could see that that number being five years, $100 million, And projected right now, it's $110 million. So we'll see. But I think... Uh, somehow Godwin may because it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough for the Bucks to keep him. I mean, Godwin said he's open to coming back on the franchise tag, so that might be a lot more likely. That news just kind of broke today, right after I did all these uh, all these edits, all these layouts. But it is what it is. So regardless, I think Washington will end up with one of the top three receivers here, and then I have the net kind of the next tier guys here being um. Corey Davis going to the Ravens. I don't think the Ravens will be able to afford one of the top three guys here. And you could throw Will Fuller kind of into that mix, but I think he kind of returns on a on a uh, one-year prove-it deal, not the franchise tag with Houston. So we'll see, maybe, maybe not. Um, but I think Corey Davis ends up going to Baltimore. He's kind of what, uh, at least is rumored, what, they kinda, what they're kind of what they looking for, kind of a bigger target because Lamar likes them big targets. Ain't that right? Mark Andrews. So Corey Davis going to Baltimore. Then I have Juju going to the Raiders. I mean, they did it, they did it with Nelson Aguilar, who was kind of at this point in his career where it's like, oh, he's kind of a glorified slot guy. But he made it work on the outside. So maybe they think they could do the same with Juju, who's hasn't really seen success on the outside. Like a majority of the success he found was in the slot, especially when AB was around. But they, they, I think they'll make a pitch to bring him in and try to play him on the outside. So, I think the Raiders will be tr- will be involved in the in the in the wide receiver market, but with those second tier guys. And then the rest of the guys here, I got T.Y. Hilton going to the Dolphins. The Dolphins can't get Allen Robinson, can't get Chris Godwin. I think they, I think they could sell for a guy like T.Y. Hilton, who, yeah, he's kind of in the downslope of his career, but still a very speedy receiver so they and it's a little bit different than what they have there currently in their receiver room uh marvin jones said he's kind of ring chasing and the colts they have they have the cap room to make a bid at receiver and they really need to upgrade the receiving core especially if uh hilton is gone so i could see marvin jones go into the colts and then curtis samuel's just a fun fit for uh that new york offense now you know with uh lafleur's there i think he he's he could definitely benefit from a LaFleur's uh LaFleur scheme. And uh like I said, I think Fuller will somehow make it back to the Texans. Uh Antonio Brown, I think, is going he'll go back on like a probably like a two year deal with some incentives back to Tampa. Uh and I think Watkins might go back to the Chiefs on a one year deal as well. So just a few a few of my predictions there. And then the tight end class. I have Hunter Henry getting hit with the franchise tag and then maybe extended. Uh, I know there's rumors out there that he wants to play with not a rookie quarterback, but I don't know. Herbert was kind of good last year. So I think if they're going to extend him and pay him, I think it'll end up working out. But Jonah Smith going to Arizona. They they need more playmakers in that receiving core. Uh, is Cliff Kingsbury, he's trying to kind of tailor fit that air raid offense to the nfl and a lot of that involves a horizontal passing game opposed to a vertical vertical passing game was almost near impossible for them to really really do last year they really need to invest in in the draft probably uh, to a receiver that could stretch the field vertically but i think jonah smith he, he's over the last couple of seasons he's among the top in the tight end position 
in broken tackles, yards after the catch. So you get a good after the catch target there at the tight end. You can upgrade from Dan Arnold. I'm just saying. Uh, then I have Gerald Everett going to the Panthers, man. Hey, man, Joe Brady. He liked him some uh, Thaddeus Moss. So you get a guy with a lot more upside than Moss. Uh, Ian Thomas hasn't really been it for the Panthers. So three years, $15 million, pretty solid deal. Jared Cook I have going to the Jaguars. Uh, they could upgrade from Tyler Eifert. Injured, often injured, Tyler Eifert. Uh, Jared Cook, another guy on the downslope of his career, but you get him on a really good deal, one year, $5 million. Not that the Jags need to worry about money with their cap space, but I think that's still a good upgrade to the position. I think Gronk likely re-signs. I mean, there's no way he plays anywhere but Tampa next year, so if he plays, he's going back to Tampa. Then on to the fun position, the tackle position. And... Guys... Go to there in my notes. And at the tackle position, Terrell Bowden. I think he's likely hit with the franchise tag, which I think is actually probably the best option for him because uh, I think waiting until Ryan Ramchak gets his payday really helps him out a ton because because um, he's been one, like one of the probably a top five, top ten uh, right tackle in the league. Very consistent, very, very productive. He's only allowed 10 sacks and over 3,100 uh, snaps. So I think he will get franchised and he will have no problem sitting on the franchise tag waiting for Ramshack to get his so Moton can get his. But I have Russell Okun going to Washington. There are some ties there with the, what is it, the uh, executive vice president there used to be the gm there for the panther or the yeah the gm for the panthers who brought in okun so they could bring him in on a one-year deal uh if they want to upgrade the left tackle position which by no means didn't play the left tackle position there between what christian and um cornelius uh, lucas uh, it was fine enough but yeah he a guy like okun gives you a bit more upside and then uh, Villanueva, I have going to the Chargers. I think the Chargers are going to make a big push this offseason with their uh, try to get, improve their offensive line because outside of Brian Bulaga, it's absolute trash. Let's be honest, Chargers fans. So you get a guy in Villanueva who's been one of the better pass protectors in the league, and he, he's decent enough in the run game, but really you're looking pass protection for your franchise quarterback and then ricky wagner i think is going to be a really good bargain he'll play he played exceptionally well there for green bay at right tackle so i think the giants they could bring him in have him be uh really an upgrade at right tackle in general uh and you'll kind of see where i go with the giants offensive line in free agency when we get to the interior guys but two years nine million i that's that's solid so and then I have uh, guys like Brown and Williams and Beecham are likely to re-sign. At least that's the impression I've been given. And then on to the offensive interior line. I don't expect any franchise tags to be used here. But hey, man, I could be surprised. They could end up like I could see Joe Thune getting hit with the franchise tag. But uh, speaking of Joe Thune, man, I have him going to the Bengals, man. I think they have some cash to play with and they need to protect their franchise quarterback so i think he's going to get paid and paid handsomely the patriots can't afford to keep him unfortunately and then like i said with the chargers they i think they're gonna make an effort to improve the offensive line and they get Corey Lindsay, uh, Lindsay here who played exceptionally well for green bay last year and you get him on a three-year 33 million dollar deal so pretty solid again this is over the cap projection so take that as you may so instantly you get get immediately better at the left tackle and at the center position and then i have david andrews going to the giants on a pretty solid deal three years 18 million uh and i could see this happening and a lot of people be like what about nick gates he was fine he was he was actually he produced better at right guard and right tackle the year before than he did at center so bringing a guy that actually can play center that joe judge is familiar with and just slide uh, Gates over to right right guard, have him compete with Will Hernandez, and still got uh, Zettler there. So, yeah, and then you have Rick, Ricky Wagner at right tackle. You have Andrew Thomas, who was turning it on at the end of the year at left. Then you have suddenly a pretty darn good offensive line, in my opinion. And then the Patriots, 
I don't think they could commit a long-term deal to Andrews. That's why I have him getting uh, Alex Mack uh, on a basically a vet, uh, nice little one-year $6 million deal. I think that will bring in somebody for the offensive line. So I got him getting Alex Mack. Good veteran. And then Brandon Sheriff, I think, re-signs, uh, gets extended to a nice long-term deal. He deserves it. He's one of the best uh, guards in the league. Matt uh, Failer, I can't. I can see him coming back on a um, low cost deal. Same with Ted Karras. I think he played pretty well for the Dolphins in terms of pass protection. Could have been a runner, better run blocker, but it is what it is. I think he he was definitely probably one of the top fifteen centers in the league last year. So I'm totally cool with that. But uh, yeah. That's it for the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and be here tomorrow when I go over defense. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.